Newly appointed head of science, Gemma Beacon, has been travelling the country, looking at science and engineering clubs to get an idea of how to best run her own. Today, she's visiting the Amersham School to see a club run by science teacher, Kelly Cousins. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very well, thank Good. you. Uh, welcome to the Amersham School. Would you like to come and meet the Science Club, you guys? Thank you. The Amersham Club is one of 250 DCSF science and engineering clubs across the country. Gemma has come to see a variety of experiments which will highlight various concepts that are key to running an exceptional science and engineering club. She's going to be joining us for the day while we do our experiments and basically seeing what we get up to. Here in Amersham, the students come every week for an hour after school and it turns out that most weeks it's an independent experiment. And the children come along and they've said what they'd like to do and they get on and they do it for an hour. But what was also interesting is they've been running sort of projects that last sort of two to three weeks. Of course. Maybe, but oh, you still scored. What did we get? Three. 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 Three? One of the longer projects the club has been looking at is robotics. Rosie has been in charge of building and programming a robot. This is the software that comes with the robot. This is the motor control, and down here you can see which motor you want to use, A, B or C, and then here is whether you want to go forwards, backwards or stop, how long you want it to go, how fast, and we've got it on half power because we were bowling, so you can change it. People sometimes fall into the trap of trying to run a large theme over a year, and that's not necessarily the case. You can do it for a week, maybe leading up to a specific anniversary of a famous scientist. There could be, for example, National Science and Engineering Week that you tailor your activities around. So the themes and the time period don't necessarily need to be very long. I think the benefit of doing longer term projects is that they can see that we're not just doing snapshots of science or technology, we can actually go into further investigations and it's also useful for them before they go into GCSE and A-level where they'll have to do coursework. Oh, no. Gemma grabs a moment with the D&T teacher, who helps Kelly run the robotics project in the club. They work so closely together, their departments have now been merged. Science and technology started to work so closely together that we're actually one faculty now. That's we're not really science and technology, we call ourselves SciTech, so we're even branded and we've got the logo outside. Yeah. So we work more closely together. Science do a lot of the theory and basic experiments. Technology being the practical application of, te of science. Yeah. Pupils come over and they will build torches or alarms or stuff like that. Um, and any resources they need to support this. I think it's very important to get other members of staff to get involved with Science and Engineering Club because I can't run it purely by myself with the volume of kids that want to do it. It's become very popular and I even have a waiting list now. We also have somebody in the maths department who will come over and do various things at different times. It's really important to get departments working together on a science and engineering club because at the end of the day you're trying to show pupils the link between science, technology in particular and also mathematics. And also we don't ever see engineering discussed in schools so if you can show pupils where those departments work together and how it all fits together I think that's all well and good. we're going to do is custard behaving strangely now this one's actually going to be a competition so therefore the group that produces the best one or should I say the custard that behaves the most strangely will get a prize okay and I think we'll let Miss Beacon um, judge it at the end the Custer Behaving Strangely experiment is a big favourite because of the mess it makes. They're also quite in awe of the fact that once they've mixed the custard and the water together, that they can actually get something that when you put pressure on it, will go solid. Oh, that's really disgusting. 
It's just such a special experiment because you can see it happening in front of you and it does the two different things. It will go hard and it will also go back to a liquid again. So they enjoy watching it and uh, basically making a mess with it. <laughs> There's no doubt that everybody is switched on by making lots of mess, smoke and flames and, and whiz bangs. But the important thing there is to pull the science out and show people where that is used. And by doing that, you can switch people's minds on to extended project work. If you're looking at mess and, and goo, then there's, there's things where slime is used in nature, that's, that that sort of thing. Mess? Look at this, you look roll it roll up in a ball, you let yeah. go and it goes back to liquids. That's brilliant. Weird. That's really good. How do you feel about the competition? Are you going to win? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah? And do you like having competitions? Yeah, yeah it's really fun. What's challenging? I think competitions is a great way of engaging kids. It definitely works. Anything from a chocolate bar up to a big prize of a DVD. It's hard. They will really get involved with anything they're doing, even if it may be a more mundane thing that they're making. They will really get involved and engaged with the learning and also with one another. It's a good idea to have competitions within science clubs, but there also comes that point where maybe some children, if they're not, if you've got one team that's always winning, it can sort of have a positive and a negative. What I've seen is it's really nice to have inter-school competitions where children work as a team, as a whole, as a school, um, and compete against other schools. It's much, I think that's much more effective than a competition within a science club. Is everyone's doing a really good job of making silly custard. First prize goes to some people that have taken that whole idea of trying to make this into a solid and then showing it becomes a liquid to a whole new level. These girls over here. You show your show us your ball, please, girls. So it's a really big ball of silly custard. The club's experiments make a lot of mess, but luckily, help is at hand. So how's your involvement in Science Club? Well, I'm, I'm Miss Cousin's technician, and I, I get all her experiments and things ready for her. And I help in Science Club as well, getting all the things ready that they, they're going to use. Does that add to your workload? Yes, it does, but I enjoy doing it. It's quite a challenge. And how's, <laughs> it, and how's it different to your day-to-day -day work? Well, I get involved in, with the children with this. Normally, I, I don't. I just produce the equipment yeah. and then um, leave them to it. We've also got some people running clubs across the country that wouldn't traditionally get involved with pupils. For example, science technicians um, are running some clubs and they're getting a lot out of it as well. It's giving them a chance to interact with the pupils a lot more than they would do normally. I couldn't do it without my technician. It would be impossible because I have to get all the equipment ready then as well as try to run it. Some of the A-level students who are members of the club are going to demonstrate an exciting experiment to the younger pupils. This will improve not only their knowledge of science, but also their communication skills. OK, um, now we have one of the most famous and time-honoured traditions of Amersham School, and that's the bubble experiment. What we do is we pump methane gas into a mixture of bog-standard washing-up liquid and um, we see what happens. What's happening is the methane is being held inside the bubbles by what's called surface tension, which um, allows it, makes it easier to combust. Bevan, if you please, the flame. There's a really strong sense of peer learning here. There's a lot of students who were helping today. Um, they were going around checking the students were doing the experiments properly. And you can still, there was a real, there was excellent rapport there. There was respect from the younger students. And it was stretching the older students' learning as well. Very good, thank you. I think involving older pupils is really important because it gives the older pupils a chance to become learning mentors. It gives them a sense of responsibility and that could be good to go down on their record of achievement or CV. But also it allows the club members themselves to talk to somebody near their own age range. Kelly tries to do experiments that will also appeal to girls. This week, 
the club are excited to be making bath bombs. Okay, so these ones you can actually take home with you, all right? So you can use them at home if you want to and impress your parents by saying, look what I made today. I think within a science and engineering club, you have to try and have a good split between girls and boys. I know there is a big push to try and get more girls into science, and within my science and engineering club, we don't seem to have that problem. The girls are really enthusiastic, and they, they are a majority of girls within the club. We're all close. We have to try and ask what they want to do and what they think is exciting or fun or what engages them in order to then run your club according to that. From what I noticed today, there's an awful lot of girls in the science club, which I thought was quite unusual, actually, um, especially as it has kind of a robotics and electronics side to it as well. Um, one of the reasons might be because Miss Cousins is running it, and I think lots of the girls probably look up to her and see her as a really good role model in science and therefore are encouraged to come to science club. What I like about science club is we do lots of fun experiments and I learn more than I do in my actual science lessons. I met lots of people in other years who enjoy science just as much as I do. Um, it's just like all the experiments that we do and like I've met loads of friends from joining the science club kind of thing and I know more. I like enjoy science even more. One of the things the pupils loved about making bath bombs is that they can take them home. The bath bomb experiment is another favourite for the kids because it's something they can take home. They've heard of it before and they know it's in cosmetic uh, shops, so therefore they're quite excited about the fact that they can make their own. Anything that they know is being sold currently out there, they're excited about making for themselves. They know the principles of how it's made um, and they've also seen how it works, so that they enjoy doing those because they can take them home. What's your favourite thing about Science Club? Um, Miss Cousins. Miss Cousins? Yeah. And why is she the best thing about science? Because she's the one who makes it really good. She organises trips and everything for us. She's just excellent like that. Right, Adam, when you're ready, put it in, please. Allowing pupils to make things and, and take things home, for example, bath bombs or little clocks and things, I think does add an extra element of variety. It also gives them something to look at so they can think back and think, yeah, I did that in my club, and it's a, a little memento. As the day ends, Gemma reflects on what she's seen at the Science and Engineering Club in Amersham. I've really enjoyed my day here. It's been really inspirational. The students are so excited about Science Club. They love coming every week. So what concepts did Gemma identify as key to running a great Science and Engineering Club? Longer projects can last a week or a month and tie in with an event or anniversary. If you can work with other departments, it will be mutually beneficial and show the students the links between different subjects. Mess and bangs can be popular, but remember to tease the science out of the fun. Competitions are a good way of getting students engaged in projects, whether they're internal, inter-school or national. Support from a lab technician will be invaluable. Peer learning benefits both the pupils' teaching and the pupils' learning. Use approaches that appeal to both boys and girls. Pupils like to be able to take projects home to show friends and family. What I take home from today is the fact that, again, she's used students and asked them what they want and the students direct the direction of the club. And that's something I would definitely take away with me if I was going to set up a science club. <laughs>